I remember, you know, when I first started my practice, I was teaching nutrition and health and people will come in, they bring their blood work in and I wasn't trained on functional health ranges. I really wasn't, you know, I, in school, I, I didn't learn any of this kind of stuff. I had to do a lot of, a lot of training outside of school, but I remember early on, you know, people would come in with all their labs and they would say, Oh, like all my labs are normal, but I feel terrible. Right. Like I've mm -hmm. got all these issues going on. My doctor says everything's normal. They're just giving me an antidepressant or whatever it is. And I realized early on that I was like, you know what? There's got to be more to these labs. There's got to be yeah. something going on. And that's when I started pursuing advanced training on how to interpret things from a functional perspective. And it's like you can see so many different patterns for dysfunction. I'm not talking about disease, but dysfunction where uh, areas of the body are starting to break down. And they're giving clues. And those clues are coming in these biomarkers that we see on labs. And uh, most doctors out there, 95% plus, are not trained in how to understand these functional biomarkers. And that's where you know somebody, a great health coach like yourself, really is because you've done a lot of training in this. And you're able to understand what's happening, what kind of areas are starting to break down and have dysfunction well before disease is diagnosed. Well, and that's my story. That's why I'm doing this now. I went through my own health issues. I always looked good on paper, but I knew something was wrong. I knew that I wasn't feeling my best. And I mean, I was feeling really terrible at the time. So, and I just kept kind of getting blown off because my my, paper, my numbers look good. So learning this, that's why I went back to school to study mm -hmm. nutrition and functional medicine was to try to help myself. And then I just fell in love with it and decided that, you know, it's truly my calling, try to help other people going through these issues. So, um, but yeah, we love to look at patterns. So there's a lot of inflammatory markers. So we know that chronic inflammation is the underlying cause of many diseases, if not all. And so looking at inflammatory markers is really important. And one of the main inflammatory markers, and most doctors will run this, is high sensitivity C-reactive protein. So this is a protein that's actually made by your liver when tissues in your body are inflamed. So it's elevated with either general or systemic inflammation. So it's a really great screening test. We really like to see that one. It's a useful marker for brain inflammation, but just inflammation in general. And that can really be caused by a number of factors. You know, we've talked about some factors, but like in infections and autoimmune conditions. So mm -hmm. that's a really important marker to run. And when we're talking about functional range, so I think the conventional range is zero to three for that, and we want it less than one. So if it's less than one, we know someone's inflammatory burden is low. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. And when you, before you get a test done, you don't want to exercise intensely the day before, right? Or at least, you know, yeah. like within 24 hours, roughly, um, because that could falsely elevate CRP. In fact, if you were to test somebody who, who just ran a marathon or something like that, their CRP levels, it looks like they have a heart attack. So you take that out of there, you get your, you know, you take a day off from exercising, get your blood work drawn, right? That CRP is up over one. It's telling us there's heightened levels of inflammation going on in your body. It's something you want to address. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then another acute phase reactant, which CRP is an acute phase reactant, which means it goes up or down directly related to inflammation. So another marker for that is actually ferritin. So mm. ferritin measure is um is a blood protein that contains iron. So it helps your helps you understand how much iron your body's actually storing. And a, if you have too much ferritin, then that's an indicator that you have inflammation in the body. So we look at that. We see that a lot with our clients with chronic um, illnesses like cancer or other conditions, mm. infl inflammatory issues. So that's a good marker to look at. People think of that as your iron stores, but that actually when that's high, that blood ferritin level can be high due to chronic health issues. Yeah, when we look at ferritin, we know that a lot of different microbes, bacteria, parasites, as well as um, abnormal tissue like cancer cancer cells are going to use free iron in the system, almost like uh, like you know it's like logs, it's it's kindling logs on a on a fire, right? So it helps helps them grow and helps them divide, right? When it comes to the bacteria, the abnormal cells. So what the body does is it tries to keep more of that iron in the storage form. And that's why ferritin will end up going up rather than putting it into um, free iron that these microbes or cancer cells can use to grow and, and to fuel themselves. 
And so you'll start to see that ferritin rise. And again, that's an acute phase uh, reactant that we'll look at with that. Now, what are the optimal ranges there? Um, optimal. So you may have to help me with this. I think 50 yeah. to 150 is women and yeah. um, 50 to 200 is men. Is that right? So with men, so typically we don't want to see it up over 150. With women, okay. you're, you're especially uh, menstruating women, you're going to tend to see it a little bit lower because again, they're bleeding. So they're using, uh, you know, more, they, they have, they have less iron in storage. So that's why it's, it's somewhere around 50 to 150. We always want to see it up over 50. Okay. If they're yeah. down low, that could be a sign of an anemic tendency. So we want to address that. But for men, they're not, you know, obviously menstruating. So unless they had a major hemorrhage or something like that really should be up over 75, you know, so it's roughly like 75 to 150 or something like that. Uh, we don't want to see it up over 150, though. That, again, is a sign of that acute phase reactant with inflammation or a condition called hematochromatosis, where um, those are individuals that genetically are just storing a lot more iron in general. They're, they're absorbing and extracting more iron from their food and holding on to it. And uh, that could be a problem as well because high levels of iron, although we need it to produce hemoglobin so we can get oxygen to the cells, very high levels of iron uh, create a rusting effect, high levels of oxidative mm -hmm. stress. And um, so that ages us faster and ages all the organ organ systems of our body. So people that do have uh, hematochromatosis, which is you know separate condition that we can look at, um, but those individuals definitely need to be uh, you know, basically a, a, a um, therapeutic phlebotomy or just getting blood drawn, you know, every month for some individual, every three months, depending on how high those iron levels are, um, is very therapeutic. But again, that's more of a rare condition. Most people, when they have higher ferritin, it's related to inflammation. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome.